when you're feeling down and out, what you need is your BFF. BFF, by the way, is an abbreviation that stands for best friends forever and not burgers and french fries. I know it's tempting to think that comfort food and a bad day at the office make a good combination. But seriously, nothing quite cuts it like having good friends. Well, what is the stuff of friendship anyway? For a start, there's a kind of sharing, especially in the knowledge of intimate things. That's the privilege of true friends. In Genesis 18, we read that Abraham received three visitors. Among them was Yahweh, the Lord who appeared to Abraham in verse 1, and two angels who would later visit Sodom. Apparently, word regarding the grievous sins of Sodom and Gomorrah had reached the ears of the Lord, and impending judgment was now at hand. With regard to the mission, we see here an interesting development. In verse 17, the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? So, God conferred with Abraham regarding his plans because Abraham was a friend of God. In Isaiah 41.8, God referred to him as Abraham my friend. And it is also written in James 2.23 that Abraham believed God and he was called God's friend. The principle here is that God lets his friend know what he is about to do. And this is still true today. Jesus himself repeated the principle in John 15.15 15, I have called you friends for everything I have learned from my Father, I have also made known to you. As you read this word and spend time in personal prayer, you will gain a better insight into the will and the ways of God. As friends of God, we are not left unaware of how God is involved in our world today. But it would appear that God has shared more than just his plans with his friend Abraham. Communion between God and Abraham had also endowed the old patriarch with a share of the father's heart, which resulted in his great compassion for people. Far from being repulsed by their sinful existence, knowledge of God's will and his ways had filled Abraham with love for those who do not know better. And Jesus himself uttered similar words of compassion as he hung from the cross. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Coming back to Abraham, we see that being a friend of God had also made him a friend of the people. Some time back, following a dispute over their livestock, Lot had parted ways with his uncle Abraham and had chosen for himself the fertile plains of Sodom and Gomorrah. And then it happened that Lot and the people of the twin cities were plundered and taken captives by a powerful enemy. Now, it could be argued that Lot had brought this upon himself, and yet Abraham responded in kindness to the news of his troubles. In Genesis 14, the peace-loving patriarch pursued the enemy, and in the daring nighttime operation, he routed them and he rescued Lot, along with all the other captives, the godless people of Sodom and Gomorrah. So, it appears that he had saved their bacon once before, when he owed them nothing other than a debt of compassion. Now again, Abraham's compassionate spirit shines through. In Genesis 18.22, it tells us that the men, that is the angels, turned away and moved towards Sodom. But Abraham remained standing before the Lord. This friend of the people refused to budge because he was moved with pity and concern for their state. And he pleaded with God, for Sodom. More than just Lot or the possible number of righteous people there, Abraham pleaded for the lives of all the people until God agreed to spare the whole city if only 10 righteous people could be found among them. The point of the story is simply this, that God, by sharing his plans and his heart, had led Abraham into intercessory prayer for the people of Sodom. In conclusion, let me ask you, friends, have you ever considered someone else's problems and thought to yourself, how is that even my business? Or what has it got to do with me? Well, maybe nothing whatsoever, except it is God's business and it has everything to do with His heart. So today, do you share in knowing both God's plans and His heart? If so, that makes you a friend of God and a friend of the people. 
and you are now strategically placed for intercessory prayer. Intercessory prayer is God's gift to us, both a gift to pray for others and to be prayed for. You see, God Himself puts His love and His concern in us so that we can share with Him in the protection and the deliverance of the communities around us. And that's what our Wednesday Praise and Pray is all about. Being in the right place at the right time and very importantly, being the right kind of friend. The type that is both a friend of God and a friend of the people. <music>